Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about AWS Lambda Authorizer. Lambda Authorizer is responsible for both authentication and authorization process of the API Gateway and it is achieved through configuring a Lambda function with API Gateway as Authorizer. And I'm going to walk through the whole process of how the Lambda looks like, what is the code inside the Lambda, and then also how to create the API gateway and attach the Lambda authorizer with it and then executing and showing how everything works together. So if we have to show this pictorially, really what happens is when a user, which is more like a computer here, makes a call to API gateway, the API gateway based on configuration of authorization because not necessarily all resources will be configured to call the auth handler but the resources which are configured for calling the auth handler will make a request to the auth handler. Auth handler will verify the authentication token and if the token is valid it is going to provide an access otherwise deny and if the return from auth handler is allowed access to the resource, then the request will be sent to the final lambda, which is the actual API gateway request handler. And it will handle the request and send appropriate response back, which will then go back to the user. But if the authorization handler finds the token as invalid, it is going to return a deny, in which case the API gateway will return an unauthorized response back and will not make a call to the main request handler, AWS Lambda. So first, let's look into both the Lambda and understand their implementation. So first, look into the API. The API is pretty straightforward. It is a simple Lambda function which takes API gateway proxy request as an input along with I lambda context and returns API gateway proxy response. I already covered how to create a lambda function responsible for API gateway in one of my previous video. I'll share the link in the description. You can go through it for more detail. But here all we are doing is we're looking for a random query string called name. If it contains the name, then we are getting the value. Otherwise, it is set as default value of no name. And then finally, we return an API gateway proxy response with status code of 200 and body is just this string. And for this, we need to use the amazon.lambda.api gateway events namespace, which comes from a NuGet package. And the NuGet package is amazon.lambda.api gateway events. So that's the API gateway lambda. And if we create an API gateway and call this lambda through the API gateway, it will just return this response. So before we implement the authorization, let's just try executing it. And then as a next step, we can go and attach the authorization lambda. So for that, I'm going to create a REST API. I'm going to click on build in the API gateway and I'm going to create a new API and here I'm going to name it as test API. Just create this API and now I'll create a new resource and I can name the resource as test. Test resource and that will be the path. Create the resource and then after that I can create a method I'm going to select get apply in the get I'm going to select lambda function and here I'm going to select the test API which is the lambda that I published which is from this code and then I'm going to save this function and this particular API is now created next what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy this API so for that I'm going to click on deploy API. I'm going to create a new stage and I'm going to name the stage as production or prod and let's deploy this API. Now the API is created. Now if I access this API it is saying missing token because the URL is incomplete. If you remember the resource is test-resource so we have to call it through test-resource and if we do that now we get 
test code 200 and body has username as no name this is the simple api which is executed now let's say we want to create authorization for this api or the resource now for authorization we have something called authorizer here and if we create a new authorizer we can either use aws cognito or we can use lambda and i'm going to walk through the lambda authorizer so for that i already created a lambda function and i'm going to walk through this function again this function also as the api gateway function adds the api gateway events nuget package but here for the input request or input parameter it expects api gateway custom authorizer request and as usual the lambda context the authorizer request or the custom authorizer request has a property called authorization token which gives incoming token from the user and then i am doing a simple check here i am checking if the authorization token is one two three four now here instead of that you can do a lot of things you can use a jwt token so you can use the jwt api to unpack the token and make sure it is valid or you can call your internal database or an internal storage to check for the validity of a token or any other logic can be implemented here for the simplicity of the example i'm just comparing against a static text which is one two three four five and if the authorization token matches that i am setting effect as allow and then otherwise default value of effect is deny and then finally i'm just returning the api gateway custom authorization response object here i'm creating a policy document in the policy i'm creating a statement which is an iam policy statement that is what ultimately the authorizer does and in the action i'm saying execute api invoke so essentially what i am doing is i am allowing a iam role a temporary iam role to let this function or to let this resource execute an api invoke so it is execute api invoke permission is given for the effect i am setting either allow or deny based on if authorization token is valid and then finally i am giving the resource uri so the resource uri is nothing but the arn execute api and then the region region is based on whichever region your api gateway is deployed then the account number this is the account number of your account and finally this is the api gateway identifier now i have to change this in our case the api gateway identifier is this so i'm going to give that and then after that you can actually provide the stage which is prod after prod we can do get which is the get method and then provide the resource name but i am going to give the wildcard essentially allowing any method and any resource to have access for this particular auth token after i save this i am going to publish this lambda function and i'm going to use the dot net lambda let me, let me increase the font a little bit i'm going to use dot net lambda deploy function and this is going to go and deploy the code into aws and for the function name i'm going to give api auth and it's going to update the existing function now if i go back here i can come to the authorizer and create a new authorizer let's give a name test test authorizer and for the function name i'm going to use api auth this i'm going to leave it empty it's not necessary for the token i'm going to provide the name that the api gateway custom authorizer request provide which is authorization token so i'm just going to copy in the token source and i'm just going to make it small i am going to disable caching because choose if authorization should be cached and for how long now the problem with that is you know you don't want to cache the authorization because token might change anytime so it's better not to cache it create and here it is saying hey you are trying to create this by the way the api gateway needs your permission to invoke this lambda function so i'm going to say grant and create so that api gateway can call it and then we can test it so for testing as you can see authorization token and it says it will be part of the header 
So if I pass something like one, two, three test, it's going to come with deny four five test. It is coming with allow. And you can see it is working as expected. Now let's go back to the resource. And even now, if we call this, we don't have any authorization applied. So what we are going to do here is we're going to go to the test resource to the get method and here if you look into this method request the auth right now is set to none so I'm going to change this I'm going to update this with the edit and here it's not showing up let me just refresh this page let's try it again yeah so test authorizer is showing up so I'm going to select it and save it go back and now let me try this I'll just try it a couple of times. Let me see. Test authorizer. Okay, I have to redeploy because I changed it. So let me deploy API once again to the production stage. Deploy. And let's go back to the API. Try to invoke it. Yes, now you can see we're getting authorized. Now let's try to test this same thing in Postman because in Postman we can pass the header. So for Postman, I'm going to copy paste this here send the request and I should go unauthorized error the next thing I'm going to do is in the headers I'm going to add the authorization token and here I'm going to add one two three four five that's the token send the request and you can see I'm getting status code of 200 username pass no name now if I try with something else I should get authorization error again yes the user is not authorized and then let's try this again yeah we can see that so you'll see that there is a difference between error if we don't pass any header we're going to get 401 unauthorized which means there is no token itself which makes sense and if we pass an invalid token we are going to get 403 forbidden which is also as expected and then finally with valid token we're going to get a 200 back and as you can see it is extremely simple to use authorization handler in dotnet core and c sharp to create a authorization lambda validate token attach it to an authorizer and then finally getting into a resource and its method and attach to the request pipeline as an authentication and authorization handler so this is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video